Usolo Horizon. When considering the Great Flood in a cataclysmic setting here on the Earth, we rely on the sacred scriptures to draw our conclusions, and it seems that events must have happened because almost every culture in the world related to a flood story in their creation epics. But where is the evidence? That is, where is the geological layer on the earth that overwhelmingly says that this critical event in our history did in fact happen? Well, what if we were to tell you that such a geological layer does exist? That it has been detected in Europe and in the Americas. A line of rich charcoal that happened as a comet impact took place right around 12,500 years ago that triggered the Great Flood, known to experts today as Usolo Horizon. Wait till you hear this. First noticed in Holland during the 1940s and now uncovered on six different continents, including England, the USA, Egypt, and Australia, these anomalies in the geological layer shows us undoubtedly that at these distances, a global catastrophe did take place, that the firestorms that engulfed our planet after such an impact has left its mark for all time that the stories of survival are true and the narrative is not a myth, but is in fact a survivor account of actual events that took place and ended the last cycle of human activity before the reemergence. This layer is the ancient cataclysm. The ancients would have witnessed bright meteor light objects carrying through the sky and many probably exploded into multiple fragments that on impact would have created mass firestorms consuming everything in their path. As they raged, the resulting ash would have risen to form thick clouds in the upper atmosphere, and this would have caused day to become night, obstructing the sun, moon, and the stars for months afterwards, destroying any plant life that would have survived. Accompanying this disaster scenario would have been the catastrophic tsunamis, as well as worldwide earthquakes and volcanic eruptions caused when the large comet fragments impacted with the planet's underlying continent plates, making them rock up and down in a manner that would have been disastrous to life on the Earth as we know it. Comet fragments that impact with the ice sheets in the northern hemisphere would have caused the water they held to instantly vaporize, and this would then have risen into the already darkened skies as plumes of steam, which would have mixed with the gradually forming ash clouds to produce a highly toxic concoction that fell back to the earth as acid rain. This constant downpour would have continued for weeks on end, accounting perhaps for the 40 days and 40 nights of rain mentioned in the Holy Bible's flood narrative. According to the renowned writer Andrew Collins, the most disturbing thing regarding this event is the chemical changes found in ice core samples from Greenland indicate that long after the initial impact of around 10,900 BC or 10,500 BC, forest fires, most likely triggered by constant volcanic eruptions and perhaps even further cosmic events, continue to plague the earth for anything up to an eye-watering 700 years. In addition to this terrifying scenario, the writer explains, the extended period of darkness caused by the prevailing ash cloud, a so-called nuclear winter, is now thought to have triggered a sudden temperature drop that brought on a mini ice age known to scientists as the Younger Dryad's impact event. The onset of this cold spell was just a few short decades, and yet it was to last a full 1,300 years, bringing us to 9,600 BC the date that marks our entry into the current geological age known as the Holocene. Sites like Gobekli Tepe are dating to this period. It seems humans existed in a sophisticated setting before the comet impact, 
And this shows us overwhelmingly that our past was not as bleak as one would have us believe in the pre-cataclysmic Earth. The Usulo soil is distinctive and widespread. It is the smoking gun of a cataclysm and it can't be denied that this layer exists across the entire planet which consists of a thick black charcoal rich layer anything between 2 and 8 inches in thickness which has recently been found to contain nano diamonds which are tiny silica based glassy objects and magnetic spherules only produced at extremely high temperatures in excess of 2000 degrees centigrade. Baffled archaeologists originally put down the presence of this ash layer as some kind of localized conflagration caused perhaps by forest fires which they felt were triggered either by lightning strikes or the eruption of a local volcano. What they had not anticipated however was just how widespread the Usulo horizon actually is. This being realized only after the published findings of the Dutch geologists who noticed it existed. Despite the presence in the geological record of this layer, some institutions are simply not willing to accept that such a terrifying cataclysm had occurred in such a recent geological history. Not only would accepting the implication of the Usulo horizon mean rewriting history, but promoting such a disaster scenario would be a chilling warning to the world that these terrible events could occur in our own time and that out there somewhere might be another comet that could cause very similar destruction on the planet we currently call home. The Dutch geologist in question who made the initial discovery, Han Kloisterman, is responsible for identifying this, the smoking gun of the cosmic impact with his important realizations regarding the nature of the Usulo horizon. This can be seen at Lamel in Belgium on the border with Holland where it appears on top of sandy layers laid down during the 2000 year warm period which followed the end of the last ice age 15,500 years ago. It was in the aftermath of this global catastrophe that legends from around the world speak of the survivors of the human race emerging from caves where they had been hiding from the devastation going on outside. Thereafter, these people go on to build the first temples in order to appease the gods whom they had clearly angered or forsaken in some way in order for them to treat the human race so badly and this is indeed what would seem to have happened in the aftermath of the Younger Dryads impact event. Almost as a response to what had happened, the first monumental architecture in human history begins to spring up around the world. At Gobekli Tepe in Turkey and Ganang Padang in the West Java province of Indonesia and perhaps even at Stonehenge, gigantic human-made structures appear as out of nowhere and there perhaps, unquestionably, was to ensure the future stability of the world by countering, outwitting and even appeasing the supernatural forces seen as responsible for the virtual annihilation of the world they knew. This in turn led to the emergence of new towns and cities, the reoccupation of Egypt and the beginning of royal dynasties. Perhaps the royals are the oldest survivors of the cataclysm and eventually the rise of civilization itself would see the modern world respawn from the brink of extinction. None of this is likely to have happened without the mass human response to the impact event of 12,500 years ago. While catastrophist pioneers like Han Kloisterman can be thanked for finding the smoking gun that tells us the cosmic catastrophe really did take place, no longer can the scientific community ignore the fact that the world was brought to its knees by a comet impact in fairly recent geological history and that unless we act now it can all happen again and just maybe next time the human race might not be so lucky in the reemergence of our kind and the survival of our thoughts in the trauma inflicted on the cataclysmic soil. So the next time someone says the Great Flood is a biblical myth, just remember that evidence does in fact exist in the geological layer and that layer is known today as the Usulo Horizon. But what do you the subscribers of the Lost History Channel think about this anyway? Comments below guys and as always, thank you for watching.